Before we start, don't forget like and subscribe. As Plan Ed Ryuman concealed his satisfaction behind a satisfied smile as he faced the imposter, he said to himself, I will manipulate this man's abilities to claim the Rooney of doppelgangers. It was an opportunity to obtain the hidden rune, a chance not to be missed. After that, the interviewer said, I'll ask each of you a common question. Please take turns and share your reasons for wanting to join our Player Haven Cafe. Let's start with Little Croc. Ryu Min, having gone through multiple regressions, knew exactly what the interviewer was expecting to hear. The purpose behind the establishment of the Player Haven Cafe and the type of players they sought. So Ryu said, The world can be a harsh place these days. It's frightening to face it alone. So I thought it would be beneficial to unite with other players and support each other. That's why I decided to apply. The interviewer was surprised from Ryu's answer and he said, I understand. Then he asked the same question to Black Flame Dragon. Shim Hyung said, I have a similar reason to Little Croc and I'm worried about the next round. I thought it would be helpful to exchange opinions and find support among fellow players. Now it's fake Black Scythe's turn. He said, I simply noticed the existence of this cafe and thought it might be interesting to join. That's why I decided to apply. The interviewer laughed and said, I see. Although the Black Scythe's answer is not good for his success in the interview, but there was no way they would reject Black Scythe, even if he fails the interview. Then the interviewer asked Ryu seriously, saying, have you ever experienced bullying at school? Or perhaps there's someone you wish to harm? Signs of astonishment and exclamation appear on Ryo's face, saying, What is this about? But Ryu Min had expected this question, yet he faked surprise. The interviewer said, These questions are necessary for the interview. Please provide your answers. Ryu hesitated for a moment. Well, I have been bullied before, but I don't have any desire to harm anyone, the interviewer said. I see. Do you hold any personal grudges? Feel free to share, Ryu replied with certainty. No, I don't. The interviewer was disappointed by Rio's answer and said, understood. Then he asked the same question to Black Flame Dragon. Black Flame Dragon remained silent, pondering on how to answer to ensure their passage in the interview. He said to himself, what kind of question is this? What do you want from me? Damn it. Should I be honest and admit to killing? When Ryu knew what Black Flame Dragon was thinking, Ryu Min couldn't help but smile inwardly. And he thought if Black Flame Dragon was honest and admitted to murder, he might just get a free pass. But Black Flame Dragon raised his head and replied, I haven't experienced any bullying. The interviewer sighed, once again disappointed, and said, Ah, so there's nothing? The attention turned to Black Scythe. The interviewer asked, And what about you, Black Scythe? Do you have a desire to harm someone? Black Scythe retorted, his words laced with skepticism. Why? Do you want me to kill someone for you? What's the reason behind these meaningless questions? The interviewer's eyes widened at Black Scythe, and he said with a sly smile on his face, Oh, how did you figure it out? That's right. I asked because I wanted you to kill someone for me. Well, to be precise, it's more like killing together. Everyone stared at him with a mix of confusion and disbelief. Given the discussion of murder, their reaction was understandable. But the interviewer continued, Why are you all so surprised? By the fourth round, I assume you've all gone through the experience of killing someone. Then silence filled the room. Then he said, Now that the truth is out, the final challenge of this interview is committing murder. You must take a life to pass the ultimate stage of this interview. That's why I asked if any of you had someone you wanted to kill. Ryu's expression revealed his shock, and his words came out in a stutter saying, To... to kill? Why would you resort to such actions? The interviewer sighed and said, Little Croc, you don't grasp the situation, do you? Then he nodded and continued saying, Very well, I will explain why we're doing this. Some of you may have read the news and know that the government is already taking steps to regulate and distance itself from players like us. They fear the power we possess, surpassing the limits of ordinary humans. The statement wasn't entirely wrong. Faced with the player's disorderly behavior, the government was preparing various laws and regulations. But in reality, these laws have no power over players who choose to ignore them. Such policies only fueled the player's resentment. That's why we don't need to confine ourselves within the boundaries of the law. We must resist and confront the government's regulations. It's crucial to demonstrate that players themselves 
embody the essence of the law. And murder serves as a form of rebellion, a means to showcase the player's will against the oppressive regulations of the government. It's a statement that we can't be restrained by mere laws. Silence hung in the air. Then he said, do you understand now, little croc? Ryu said yes. After that, Black Flame Dragon said, but what if we don't have anyone worth killing? How will we proceed? The interviewer said that there's no need to fret about that. And his expression turned cold, sporting a chilling smile. We have already identified suitable targets in anticipation of this very moment, Ryu said. Nevertheless, taking the lives of innocent civilians feels, but he stopped and did not finish the sentence. The interviewer replied, don't fret. The targets I've selected are criminals. So there's no need for you to bear the weight of a guilty conscience. Of course, as players aspiring to lead the world, you must possess a heart as resolute as black scythes here. At that moment, Black Flame Dragon said, Who are we going to kill? Black Flame Dragon's question elicited a sly grin from the interviewer and said, Originally, if any of you had someone you wished to eliminate, I planned to make them the target. But since you claim to have no one in mind, we're left with no choice but to abduct a pre-selected target. Black Flame Dragon said in amazement, Abduct? The interviewer said, Yes, after kidnapping the target, we'll find a suitable location to dispose of the body. Then, the four of us will work together harmoniously, tearing the target to pieces. If you accomplish that, you will pass the interview. Then he said, Shall we get up? After a while, we see an unconscious woman with the interviewer, Black Flame Dragon, said, What are we doing now? And who is this woman? The interviewer said with evil smile, This woman is the target. The interviewees glanced at the unconscious owner lying beside them, their faces filled with confusion. They seemed to be in a deep slumber. Ryu said, But you mentioned targeting a criminal. The interviewer replied, Yes, that's correct. The woman's a typical snake who recently got released from prison and now leads a new life after laundering her identity. Black Flame Dragon and Black Scythe tried to feign surprise at the last moment, pretending they have been fooled by him, but Ryu Min saw through their act. They knew the truth, as the manager's true intentions were clear as day. And this woman isn't criminal. Ryu Min Saiduo himself labeling innocent civilians as criminals. The manipulation was designed to make it easy for them to commit murder by wrongly accusing innocent people, and their plan is to involve us in the killing, making it difficult for us to back out later. While Ryu was thinking, a wicked smile crept across the interviewer's face, saying, Does anyone want to have some fun? It would be a shame to just kill her like this, don't you think? Fake Black Scythe said. Do you have something in mind? The interviewer said with evil smile, Well, if we're going to kill her anyway, it would be a shame not to do anything. Then why don't we enjoy it together? No, this calls for generosity. I shall grant Black Scythe a special opportunity. Let him have some fun first. The imposter said well and stepped forward without a hint of regret. Reading his thoughts, it was clear that he had already made up his mind to kill the woman, and he considered it acceptable even somewhat enjoyable, to engage in sexual assault before killing her too. In that moment, Ryu Min stepped forward while Black Flame Dragon, seeming annoyed, stepped back and said, Just a moment, may I go first? The interviewer laughed and said, This is amusing. I didn't expect someone as shy as you to be interested. But being in the prime of your youth at the age of 20, Ah, is it your first time? Ryu said yes. The interviewer requested permission from the imposter, saying, Sorry, but could you give Little Croc a chance instead? It's his first time. The imposter said, Okay, do your best. I'm making you a special concession here. Ryu Min also smiled and replied, Thank you. I will make good use of the rune of the doppelganger. Hearing that, Fak Black Scythe was surprised and shocked. Then Ryu Min used a little force and hitted him, and Fak Black Scythe collapsed lifelessly to the ground. Part ends here. Don't forget like and subscribe and write in comments if you want next part.